Welcome to Pro Tips, Creating Brushes in Adobe Illustrator. I am Daniel Flores, aka DTM. Find me online at Delta Tango Mike. And for the next 30 minutes, I will share my steps to creating the brushes I like. Then join us in the Discord right after the stream. Please bring your questions, comments, and suggestions so we can hang out and continue this discussion. Welcome everybody in the chat. Thank you for coming through and leaving us a comment. If you leave a comment, then we know you're watching. If you don't leave a comment, I appreciate you watching, but uh, I like to know you're there. Now let's go ahead and get started and share my screen. There's a whole lot going on here. So let me go ahead and zoom in really quick. And uh, before I give you um, a, a sneak peek into what we're talking about today. Now let's talk about why I make my own brushes. And that's what we're here to talk about today, right? making your own brushes. Now, as an artist, I started my career a long time ago drawing comic book art. I'm a big fan of comic books. Batman is one of my main characters that I like. And I like how in the comic books, you're able to create art. Uh, well, they work with the, they create the art using ink brushes, right? Back in the olden days and paper and so on. And so I always like those, those brush strokes where the line ends in a little point. Let me see where it is. Boom, here goes like a little point right there. And so to this day, I draw that way. I like drawing in a way where the brush stroke ends, starts and ends in a taper. That's what it's called. So I want my vector drawings to come in, to have that comic book art style. But I, I want that look, but I want it to be scalable, which is why I draw with vectors. A lot of vectors. Look at this. All these anchor points. So in the early days of uh, digital drawing for me. Let me see if I can zoom out and get to where I want to go. Boom, boom, boom. I got used to, well, first I started digital drawing on the iPad with a couple of these apps. And I forget which one came first, Ideas or Line. I think it must've been Ideas because the way that the logo looks, I forgot now, but I had an iPad and I started drawing with uh, Invector with these apps. And I didn't understand the mechanics of it because it was very the way those brushes responded to the drawing on the tablet was very different to what I was used to with pencils and inks but as time went on man I got really used to it I really like how it came out um the the way I, I could I started to understand how a particular brush stroke would re, would come out on the screen based on how I afflict my wrist and move my fingers and so on. And so as Illustrator on the desktop developed, I saw the Blob Brush tool and that's a super cool tool. However, one thing I don't like about the Blob Brush tool is that sometimes you cannot go really, really, really thin. And it depends on the drawings that I'm doing that sometimes you want that nice, clean, thin line in relation to the drawing that you're working on and and there's a limit so this is a number two uh brush stroke with the blob brush right here and this is a number 20 with pressure and this one still has pressure too i think when i did that but it's very hardly the pressure is very hardly noticeable because of the size of the brush so this is why we make our brushes at least for myself okay i like to adjust the size of the brush after drawing i like that the brushes that I create sometimes are not dependent on pressure sensitivity. And this is where I needed to have my tablet over here. I'm working on a Cintiq. There's a big Cintiq in front of me, 21 inch. I work on Surface. I work on iPad. I have other drawing tablets that I use in, um, in, in the past. And sometimes I don't want that pressure sensitivity. And instead, I want to control the thickness of the line. And one of the main reasons on why I like to set up my own brush and make it um, not pressure sensitive is so that I can have the size that I want at any particular point during the drawing. And so here's a couple examples of some brush strokes. I have some brushes that I made and it's the same brush, but it's just the way how I set up the settings for that brush that I get a fat brush that pH stands for fat fat pressure. And so th there's a, a big um, thick line on the outside versus a thin one, which is where I am adjusting the pressure. Then I have the, um, the fat 
brush, but it's fixed. So that's what the F stands for. So no matter how hard, how hard I press on the screen, I'm going to get the exact same line weight every time. And sometimes that's what I want. And, and I try to keep my drawings simple. And uh, sometimes I get go, I go crazy with the details. So I like to make sure that at least I start with the brush stroke that I want, no matter what part of the drawing I'm in. And, and no matter how long I've been drawing, that's also another thing that happens. You're in the, in the beginning of the drawing, you're fresh, you're, you're ready, you're hyped. And then a few hours later, you're tired and like, I'm still drawing, finishing these drawing. And so I want each stroke to be exactly how I want it, no matter what point of the drawing I'm in. Big ups to everybody joining us in the chat. Thank you so much. I see you. I see your names. Um, so then there's another uh, brush stroke I have where I've already changed the size and I still have a pressure version and a fixed version. And this one I don't call fat. This one is just a thinner version. And this is why I like to create my own brushes because sometimes I can get very, very thin on the, on the brush stroke and then it makes it really easy to um, just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing. And I don't have to think about, well, do I want that line to be thicker? Do I want that line to be thinner? That's uh, one of those uh, reasons why, or many of the reasons why I like to make my own brushes. But before we continue, I want to show you your keyboard shortcuts. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote this out myself. So excuse my handwriting. I can draw better than I can write. <laughs> We got a couple of uh, shortcuts, and uh, and that is um, the B, letter B for paintbrush. So anytime you press the B in your keyboard, you're going to get the paintbrush. Uh, the V is to get our selection tool, or the letter A to get our direct selection tool, and that's going to be the arrows in the top left. And then our shift for, um, for the B for the blob brush. And I love the blob brush. Let me tell you, the day that the blob brush I came across the blob brush and illustrator. I was able to have that natural organic looking drawing style in illustrator versus I love the, the, the pen tool. Don't get me wrong versus the pen tool where, you know, things can look a little mechanical because of the nature of the pen tool anchors and handles. All right, cool. There we go. So that's a little bit of background on that. Let's get to it. All right. Before I continue, uh, where do I find vector brushes if you want some to start collecting brushes and uh, you don't want to make them or you want to see what's out there? It's easy and fi to find online. Free and paid vector brushes are available just about anywhere you go, especially if you know how to search. But online, I would go through Design Tutorials Plus, Creative Block, DeviantArt, and even on Behance. So make sure you do a quick search and start looking for the kind of brushes that it's going to work for the type of artwork that you make. Uh, of course, you can always, and we're going to look through that in a minute, but let me go ahead and finish uh, looking through my drawings. Oh, that's a pen tool drawing, and this is a blob brush drawing. So there we go. I wanted to touch on that. Blob brush drawing, pen tool drawing, and then uh, vector brushes in fresco. Um, let's go ahead and explore some of these uh, brushes here in, um, uh, in Illustrator. They're already included in Illustrator. If you want to see your brushes window, you can always go to Window and then Brushes. Here they are at 5. I already have a few brushes in here. Boom. All right, Steve says, everyone who showed up on time one. <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, everybody for hanging out in the chat. I appreciate that. Um, so, so yes, we go through the window menu, find our brushes, and there's some of the basic brushes that are already be populated in your brushes panel. However, these are the brushes that I've just been playing with for the past few days. And if you want to expand the kind of brushes that you have access to and see what Illustrator already includes, we can go through the library and look through all these different kinds of brushes that are already in here. I like to go through the artistic uh, ink brushes. Boom. I like the fact. Uh, you like that bat, wing, uh, bat Dan drawing? Thank you, Axel. Uh, I like the fact that um, there's inking 
style brushes in here. And this is super cool. These are one of the first few brushes that I used to draw with right here. The one with the tapered ends because I want my drawings to have that comic book style and flavor. So let's go ahead and move some of these out the way. And at this point, I do need my glasses. There we go. Boom. So I can see what I'm doing. Let's get that brush. And uh, let's go. Let's make a line. Boom. And it's not a perfect line, but I will go ahead. Oops, not that one. Let's go ahead, select that um, path and change my color. Let's just change it to a color we can see. And this is another reason why I like these brushes or using the brush, the paintbrush tool, because it's still a vector line. And I need to turn uh, lock some of these layers. There we go. Boom. Because you're able to move the line after. So even if you overshot your brush stroke, <laughs> you can change it. Oh, my gosh. OK, let her be again. I'm sorry, I get excited about this. I don't know. There it goes. Boom. There goes another line. And so using the brushes that come in Adobe Illustrator is super important to try out because you might like what's in there. I I'm cool with this. Um, the one that starts in the square. Let me see. And then ends in the taper. That's cool because sometimes you do want that. Let's see. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. And uh, what if I want it here? Bam. So then I got the square edges. That's good. That's good. Okay. So. I, I before I showed you how to make the brushes, I, I wanted to make sure that you know that these brushes in Illustrator already exist. And this is cool, right? All right. So every time you use a brush, it shows up in your brushes panel. And you can always close out any other panels that pop up when you're looking for brushes. Last thing is, if I select these brushes, I can change the size of the stroke and make it thinner. Uh huh, or make it fatter. It all depends on what you want out of the brush. And uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, make our own brush. So let's delete that and uh, go into an empty space here. In this empty space, I'm going to grab my, I'm going to go get my pen tool, tap, let go, hold shift, tap, let go, boom. I made a path, right? Okay, let's get the. Come on, come on. There we go. So that now I just have my uh, my uh, path right here in front of me. Let me zoom in a little bit. Come on. Here we go. It's around here somewhere. There we go. Nice. And it's a very thin line. I think I have my path settings to rounded corners and uh, rounded cap. I like it. And now I want to uh, check this other tool and this is the width tool i need my width tool and this is what i what i do with it right sometimes the end of the line you do want it to have that roundness maybe you don't want that hard taper but so with this width tool you can decide whether you want a hard taper or a uh, rounded corner so before i start messing with the corner i will go ahead and Thicken out a little bit on the edge here before I get to the end of the path. Then I will go ahead and tighten out this little end of the path right there. So go all the way to the other side. Mm -hmm. There we go. And do the same here. Just keep, get add a uh, little um, width setting there and then set this one down really tight like that bam so now i have a path that has kind of a thickness in the middle and tapers on the end okay cool 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 and i made it so long and thin because this is where i want to be able to control the thickness of the line when i'm drawing and sometimes there's a limit to how thin you can go right here and you can keep typing numbers and i've gone really really thin and it's hard to keep track of all of that so here's one of my methods so i have a path and uh it's, uh it's straight across i like it i select it i just click through and select this whole little path in the brushes window on the top right menu let's move this over here let's set this right there top right menu it says new brush right there click on it i want to go ahead and select art brush i like that 
click on OK, and boom, here we go. Now it's up to us to determine a couple of things, you know. So this is my inking brush. I'm going to call this ink brush. My name is DTM, and I'm going to make this one thin. I'm going to type in the word thin. And here's where you want to make a couple of adjustments. And you can do this as many times as you want and make as many copies of this brush or many brushes like it. And this is where you want to start making some changes so that all your brushes are a little different. I, I want this one to be fixed. So that means that no matter how hard I press on the screen, my line weight will remain the same. This is super important to some of us who want to have a, a clean, perfect line weight and throughout our, our drawing or in different specific areas of our drawings. And so I leave that fixed. But if I were to want pressure, then I can click on pressure and then change these numbers here, change the slider to reflect some numbers that is going to then allow me the chance to apply pressure to the stroke and get a different size line. All right, boom, or, or apply pressure to the, to the brush and get a different stroke. So let's go with 100%. Is that 100? Come on, let's go. Boom, boom. There we go. And uh, one more, whatever it is. Then I'm going to leave this alone. You can make some adjustments, but I like to stretch to fit the stroke length. And then I want to change my tints and shades here. And there's a couple already settings here. And I leave it as uh, as the arrow reflects that the, the way the line is set up to draw from beginning to end. Or you can change it and you want that to be the beginning and that the end. In my case, the tapers are on both sides, so it really doesn't matter but I do leave that alone. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And boom, there it is right here it's on, on the back, on the last one here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paintbrush and this will find an open spot. And then that's the letter D and that's me. And look, the stroke is one. If you had made a thicker, uh, fatter paint uh, brush, and you draw with it, the stroke is still one, you see, but it's much thicker. So it depends on how you make your brush, whether you start with something that's really thin or something that's really thick, then the number of your stroke is still gonna be one, but it's gonna look different. That's a one stroke, that's a one stroke. And if I wanted to make this line right here thinner to look like the one on the left, then I have to start making adjustments here and I can spend a lot of time working that out. And there you go, that's almost perfect. Hey, that's pretty good. Nah, I think it's still thicker. And so so in the, if, I, if I wanted to go half as thick, 0.125, and it's, um, it's somewhere, somewhere close. I don't like dealing with all of this. Not if I can create the brush that's gonna have the size that I want so that I can focus on drawing. When I draw, when I'm working in Illustrator, I just wanna be able to draw, 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 draw. All right, so there it is. Look at that. We just made a brush. And uh, let me go ahead and get rid of these. Delete it. Let's go ahead and select my brush again. Boom. Oh, yep. Yeah, but of course, I need my, my brush, paint brush. Boom. There it is. The letter D. That's the letter D. I can always go like this. Bam. Nice. And because it is a path, you can always adjust your anchor points. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me go ahead and delete those. Go back to Batgirl. And uh, sure, let's get the thin ones. Get my brush and go like that. Boom. So this one's kind of thin. All right. So I want a thicker one. So if I wanted a thicker line, all right. Okay. And I know this one is at one. So let me go ahead. I have the brush selected. And what I want to do is make another brush just like it, but thicker. All right, do it, Voodoo, do it. That's right, Voodoo Vass is going to use these tips. That's right. So so I have a brush selected. Let me go ahead and grab my mouse because sometimes it's easy. Click on the menu. And then we're going to do click on Duplicate Brush. Boom. So now I make two. So there's that original ink brush, DTM Thin, and this one's copy. Double click it. And I'm going to call this not thin, but fat. I'm calling it fat. And those right lines are already in vector, correct. So this one's fat. I'm going to keep it fixed. 
Uh, oh, you know what? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. I'm actually going to go with pressure. There it is. And then make that 50. I think I no, no, no. Let's try that again. What I wanted to do is make a thicker version of that line. And instead, I started to show you how to make adjustments to the brush and make a second copy of the brush. So if I wanted a thicker line, that's the same thing what I was what I did earlier. Anchor point, anchor point, get my line width tool, line width tool, line width tool, but now I make sure it's thick, nice and chunky. Yeah, and then I zoom in on this part and make this really thin. There we go. I like it, yes. That's what I meant to show you. Let's go there. Uh-huh. Make it thin. Boom. Now we select that whole path right here. Boom. New brush. Art brush. Okay. This is going to be ink. And uh, let's go ahead and spell it correctly. Ink. Brush. DTM. Fat. Um, and it's going to be fixed. So let's put in the letter F. Leave everything alone. Go to tints and hues. Click OK. So now I had a, a thicker version of the same brush. And let's get rid of that one that I made a copy of because we're not going to use it right this second. So there we go. We got the thin brush that I made earlier. A thick brush that is just like it, but it's already naturally thicker. So when it's time to draw here, instead of the thin brush, what I want is a thick brush. And so let's go like this. And I'm drawing. You just can't see it. Boom. Let's do the ear. Bam. Let's do that earring. That one's too thick for the earring. And I can always come back and fix it. Here goes the chin. I like it. Oh, my gosh. Bam. Oh. <laughs> All right. So last thing I want to show you, because we got a couple minutes left. And I have more things to show you in the Discord. So make sure you join us in the Discord. All right, so we did uh, these uh, brushes, and let's get rid of them. So I got these two brushes, right, the thin one and the fat one. So now let's go ahead and grab the thin one and duplicate it because now I want to, the, the new version, the second version of the thin one, it will have pressure. Now we're going to talk about pressure. And instead of fixed, I click on pressure. I'm going to go to like 50% or somewhere around there, and let's go to 50. And then this side is going to say 150. Come on, there we go, 150. I like it. Tints and Shades is already there. Everything else is cool. Click OK. And so now I have two copies of the brush, right? Look, the normal thin one, no matter how hard I press, I'm still going to have the same th thickness of the line. But the second one, the copy that I made, if I go thin, I get a thin line. If I go low pressure, but if I go thick, harder pressure, it makes a thicker line, and the line is not that thick of a difference. So click it again, and let's make this smaller, 30, and let's make this uh, 200, yeah, somewhere around 200. Okay, leave strokes. Let's do it again. Thin line, fatter line, boom. So now it responds to pressure, and, it's, and you can keep making copies of some of the brushes that you have. Duplicate brush, double-click that brush, add the pressure. This one, instead of uh, fat F, is going to be fat P. Pressure, and I want the pressure to be a 40, sure, and 200. And you can play with these numbers to get the kind of brush you want. And now, here we go. Thin, thin, thicker and thickest. Very thick, and, very, and it's still not much thinner. So I keep playing with this. I want to go lower. Yeah, leave strokes, and boom. And uh, there it is. Bam. So this is a quick little rundown on how to do some brushes go ahead and play with them i didn't even get to talking about adobe capture that's because we need more time so stay tuned for more and join us in the discord where we're going to go over uh any questions and comments you may have and so because it's different coming from photoshop or fresco illustration illustrator feels less organic yes voodoo Val, it does feel less organic because it has that mathematical equation perfection uh when it comes to the pen tool versus uh, Fresco that has those vector brushes that will respond to pressure. And, and you have various vector brushes with uh, tapered ends, rounded corners, all kinds of different types that help you with that organic look and feel for your drawings.
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate all of you hanging around. Make sure you save your library. Make sure you are able to uh, keep track of your brushes. But if you're like me, once you turn off or close the application, you lose your brushes. And I don't care because I can always make them again. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ariel Frank, Voodoo Val, Lisa, Axel, Carol, uh, Colby, Anissa, Lisa. Did I say Lisa? I probably did. Uh, yes, uh, Steve, join us in the Discord where we're going to hang out and talk some more. And make sure you find me on the internet, DTM Delta Tango Mike. And uh, and stay tuned for my streams where I will finish some of these drawings in Adobe Illustrator to use these brushes that I'm making. Thank you all, DTM. And uh, let me know how we're doing. If, I, if you want me to keep talking, I will do it. 